Cavs hype playoff video this year was based off of the Herb Brooks again scene, Miracle. Most of you, if you're hockey fans, have probably seen it. But you know what he says in between the agains in that scene? He says, you cannot be common men because common men go nowhere. Tonight, the Avs played like common men. Avs lose to the Seattle Kraken 3-1 to in Game 1 of Round 1. Make no mistake, this was an incredibly disappointing game from Colorado. You wanted them to come out in the playoffs, play well, make a statement, and show that they're ready to go and defend their title. They really didn't do any of that. I don't know if you can say a single player on the team played well in this hockey game. And for players like Devon Taves, Val Nachushkin, and Josh Manson, this might be one of their worst games of the season. Now, one bad game isn't going to ruin the avalanche, but... This has to be the worst they play in this series, and hopefully the worst they play all playoffs for them to go decently far. And it's not all bad. The Evs did score a goal. They didn't get blown out like other teams did tonight. They had a decent number of chances. They hit a few posts. Their good opportunities just weren't finished, but they were there. And it's important to remember that, but still, this has to be the floor for Colorado in the playoffs. From the jump, the Avs just never really put it together in this game, and Seattle was able to score early. Seattle is dumping this in from their own blue line. This should not be a dangerous play. You'll see they only have one dude in front of the red line. This is just a tip-in play to get it in deep. There's nothing dangerous about this play at this point. Georgiev collects the puck behind his own net and leaves it for Devon Taves, who goes in and picks the puck up. And this is where the trouble starts. Taves collects it, but he doesn't handle it very well, so he has to pull it back on his backhand side. He can't react quickly and throw this puck up out to the zone to the forwards. Instead, he has to wait, and that extra time allows Seattle to close on him in a bunch of different directions. Taves is in a little bit of trouble now, but he still has options. As he's getting a third player to commit, he could throw this to Gerard and be fine. He could still try and get this out off the glass here or flip it high up to the middle. He has options, but his passes have more or less disappeared at this point, and he still tries a pass. He tries to throw this puck up the middle of the ice, and the problem is the Az don't have anyone in the middle of the ice. Gerard is next to him. Erod is along the wall. Both McKinnon and Rantanen are on the far side. No Av is anywhere near that puck. I guess it's technically trying to go to Erod, but he just ran out of time. He got closed in on from three different angles, panicked, and threw it exactly into what Seattle was trying to get him to do. And that's a, that's a disaster. Super dangerous from here. Georgiev does a great job to make the first save. Unfortunately, the rebound comes off the blocker and there's nothing he can do. Just a horrific turnover from Devon Taves, and it kept happening to him. He was terrible with the puck the entire night. And in the moment, in the game, it's disastrous. But in the long run, you know who Devon Taves is. You know he has bad games, but for the most part, he's very good with the puck. And if he does that through the rest of the series... The Avs probably aren't going to have nearly as much trouble. This was still in the early days of the game, and I do think the best portion of the Avs play came in the second half or the middle-ish section of the first period. It did seem like they were getting their legs back under them and, and pushing back against a quick start from Seattle. And while I don't think the Avs' top players played particularly well, even when they play poorly... They can do things like this. Avs are able to win an O-zone face-off here to get them set up in the offensive zone. McKinnon passing it back to Byram at the point, who then gives it back to McKinnon at the half wall. This is all very standard stuff. The Avs just controlling the puck in the offensive zone. But you see Miko sneak around his man and get to here. And then Miko realizes, oh, he's not staying with me. I have a lane because Evan Rodriguez is far fighting with the guy in front of Grubauer. This is all just space for Miko to work with. McKinnon still has to make a fantastic play to get this puck through. There's a guy in that passing lane, but Miko is uncovered at this point, and the coverage is just off enough from Seattle with two guys there. Neither of them really cover the passing lane proper. McKinnon slips it through. Miko gets a little bit lucky. It kicks off the skate, but he's there, and he gets rewarded. So the Avs tie it up in the blink of an eye. It just takes one play. It just takes a few seconds. That's why the Avs are so dangerous. The problem is, that was it. 
That was the only time they were able to convert in this entire hockey game. The Evs just continued to make life hard on themselves, Josh Manson taking two penalties in the first period. And even then, it wasn't a great first, but it was okay. The Avs were 1-1. They're right there. If they played better, they could easily take over this game. It's not like Seattle was dominating them. And the same is true of the rest of the game. I do think Seattle was the better team. I do think they possessed the puck more because the Avs just couldn't. They struggled to put two passes together. They struggled to do simple things. At times, they were trying to do incredibly fancy things instead of the simple, smart play. They have to trust their teammates. They have to use their eyeballs. They have to execute better, and they'll be just fine. They did very little of that in this game, though, and right off the hop in the second period, the Avs fall behind again. Seattle collecting in their own zone, circling and getting back up the ice. The Avs not even putting that much pressure on them. The problem being, Val Nichushkin just gets caught behind this play. He slowly circles in the offensive zone and just isn't able to get back up the ice to prevent what becomes a three-on-two because Val is just late. Just late. And even then, this really isn't that dangerous of a shot. It comes from outside the circle. It's not a crazy angle. As Georgiev is coming across, he's moving in. He's still getting across. He's getting ready to get to his set position and make this save. And you see his skate just catch. It just catches. He's not able to move further across. And eventually, he just kind of drops to his knees and falls over as the puck goes in. There are a lot of problems to fix in this hockey game. Georgiev just kind of falling over is not one I expect to be a continuing issue. We'll put it that way. So the Avs fall behind again, and they would never see the game even tied from there. And I don't think it was lack of effort. I think you saw plenty of that from Colorado. Their depth was running around, running into people, hitting people. Their defense was doing the same. Their top line was trying to charge through and make something happen. It just never clicked. Nothing in this game clicked for Colorado. Even their good opportunities didn't click. Val Nichushkin whiffing on a rebound that could have been a great A chance. McKinnon hitting a post. Byram hitting a post. Those are good chances that are this close to going in, but they just didn't quite do enough. And when those issues start to stack up, you get through two periods, the Avs are down one, and they just haven't played well. On the one hand, it's a one-goal game. If they go out in third and play better, they could easily get this done. On the other hand, what actually happened is they never really got to that next level and kind of petered out in a lot of ways in the third. Once again, defensive mistakes cost the Avs, and they go down two this time. This puck is getting dumped in by Seattle. It's going deep in. It takes a funny bounce off of the boards, and it looks like it's going to rim normally along the wall and come through behind the net. It doesn't. It hops off the boards and kicks out. The problem here is Josh Manson is checking everything but the puck. He's not looking at the puck. He's looking at Seattle players, maybe teammates. And then he turns to go see the puck come in behind the net with him. But the puck's not there. The puck is kicking out right in front. And this is just terrible reactions from everyone involved. Manson, unfortunate. You'd still like to see him at this point stop, recognize where the puck is, and get back in this play. He doesn't do that. He kind of just keeps skating into nothingness. And as the play comes through, you get literally no coverage from anyone. Manson is now on this side of the ice. What is Eric Johnson covering here? Literally nothing. JT Comfer, a bit slow to actually cover any hockey players. He should have stepped out on the puck carrier even quicker. And Eric Johnson should be on the correct side. He has to switch when Josh Manson comes through behind the net like that. None of those things happen. The puck comes out front and the puck goes in the Avs net. And that was it. You have a horrible turnover from Devon Taves. You have an odd man rush and your goalie literally falling over. And then you have Josh Manson seeing a tough bounce and just not playing the puck at all. Three mistakes from Colorado. And yes, Seattle deserves credit for executing and completing their chances. Something Colorado did not do in this game. But all three of those goals are issues that are pretty easy to clean up for Colorado too. And again, the Avs played pretty darn terribly in this game, if I'm being honest. And this was not a blowout. Yes, it's not good. Colorado needs to be better. There's a whole lot of things they can do better. But if they're playing that badly, and this is still, for the majority of it, a one-goal game, and it never even gets out of hand, the furthest the score got was 3-1. That's as bad as Colorado can play. Yeah, you still feel okay about this hockey team. That is the end of this game video review. Thank you for watching. Head on over to thednvr.com for all of our coverage. I am Rudo, and didn't do it in game one. Now you have to show up and play well in game two.